Today we're going old school with a look at the classic Kodak Brownie Hawkeye. Coming right up. I think it's fitting I'm releasing this video on Valentine's Day because I absolutely love the Kodak Brownie Hawkeye. It's also appropriate because Valentine's Day falls right in the middle of International Brownie Camera Days. And I'll have more information about that at the end of this video. So, Eastman Kodak introduced the Brownie line of cameras all the way back in February of 1900, 120 years ago. And uh, Kodak's goal at the time was to create an affordable, accessible camera for the masses. And they definitely achieved that goal. Kodak released cameras under the Brownie name all the way up to 1986. Now today we're here to talk about what I think is one of the most beautiful cameras ever produced, the Kodak Brownie Hawkeye. This thing is just a great example of mid-century design. It was introduced in 1949. The original version did not have a flash. They introduced the flash version in September of 1950 and production ran all the way up to July of 1961. So again, the production run spanned from the late 40s up through the early 60s, which shows you just how popular this little beauty was. All right, it's time to take a closer look at the camera and check out some of the specs. Again, I love the design of this camera. It just screams 1950s. The shell is made of lightweight Bakelite plastic. It's got a simple meniscus lens with a focal length estimated to be somewhere between 75 millimeters and 85 millimeters. And the aperture is somewhere between f14.5 and f16. Here you can see the viewfinder lens. There's the shutter release. Now the shutter speed on this is roughly 1 30th of a second and it's fixed. So you've really got to hold it steady to avoid blur. And that's especially true because there is no tripod socket on this. And there's also nothing preventing you from taking double exposures which can be good or bad depending on your perspective. Winding knob down here is plastic on this one. Some of the earliest models had metal winding knobs. Uh, it does have a helpful directional arrow here to show you which way to turn it, although it actually does have an internal locking mechanism that prevents you from winding it the wrong way anyway. This side over here, you can see where you connect the flash. And I do have a flash for this, but I've never used it. Up top here, uh, this lever, if you push this up, let you do bulb exposures. And this one is labeled L for long exposure. Again, no tripod socket, so if you're gonna take a long exposure, you've really gotta set it on something sturdy that's not gonna to move to avoid blur. Back here you can see the red window, uh, which lets you see the numbers on the film's backing paper to let you know which shot you're on. Top of the camera, you can see the viewfinder right here. And like a lot of these waist level finders, the view is reversed left to right, which can definitely take some getting used to when you're composing your shot. Carrying handle here. Here's the latch to open it up. And sometimes it's on this side, sometimes it's on the other side, depending on when it was made. There's the back side of that meniscus lens. Kodak claimed the images were being focused from about five feet to infinity, although some uses suggest a minimum distance Maybe a little bit further, more like 10 feet to your subject to make things in focus. Uh, I uploaded a video showing how to flip this lens backwards by removing a couple little screws in there. And people do that sometimes to get a soft, dreamy effect in your images. On the side here, there's some helpful instructions for loading the camera. Kodak wanted these cameras to be simple and easy for the average person to use. Remember their slogan, you press the button, we do the rest. So the written instructions actually break down this loading process pretty well. Place new roll in this holder, place empty spool here, break seal, draw paper, colored side up over square opening to empty spool. Thread paper through longer spool slot, wind knob two turns, close camera, wind to one in red window. And for unloading it says, to remove, press this end of spool out. All right, on the bottom you can see the rather ominous words, this camera does not take 120 film. Load with Kodak 620 film. Of course, the only real difference between 120 and 620 film is the spool. The size of the film is the same. Uh, now, of course, you can roll 120 film onto a 620 spool in a dark bag or a dark room, and I've done that before for an old Argus 75 I used to have, but on most of these brownies, you can squeeze a roll of 120 film into the top holder and then just thread it into an old 620 take-up spool and you're good to go. Here at the bottom, there's a little code word, YRRR, and this is a clue as to when this particular camera was made. And this follows Kodak's Camerosity code that was used on some of their cameras and slide projectors. 
They took the fake word Camerosity and assigned a number to each letter of the word. So on four character production codes like this one, the first two digits correspond to the month and the last two digits correspond to the year. So in this particular example of YRRR, we get 0555. So this camera was made in May of 1955. Now that estimate may be off by a week or so because for a while, Kodak used a calendar that was divided into 13 equal four week periods. I've got another Brownie Hawkeye with the code YARM, which corresponds to a production date of 0253 or February 1953. Now that we've taken a closer look at the camera, it's time to check out some images. You may recognize some of the images at the end of this montage because they were included in the flip lens video. At its heart, the Brownie Hawkeye is a simple box camera. Now, does this come with limitations? Sure. You're not going to be able to adjust the aperture. You can't adjust the shutter speed. You're not going to be able to take fancy portraits with blurred out backgrounds or macro shots. But the upside is it's so simple, there's really not a whole lot that can go wrong. If the shutter still fires, you're probably good to go. So I actually see the simplicity as a strength. And as great as our technology is and our latest digital gear and even our smartphones, there's still just something kind of cool about taking pictures with a camera that's 60 to 70 years old. Now I do have a couple tips for you on this camera. It only takes 12 square pictures on a roll, so if you're going to be in the field and shooting more than one roll, make sure you bring some extra 620 spools to make it easier for you to load the next couple rolls in there. And if you're going to send out the film to get developed, uh, make sure that the lab can send your 620 spools back. If they can't, this might just be the best time to go ahead and start developing yourself. The Kodak Brownie Hawkeye is so simple to use, I think it makes a great gateway camera into medium format. If you want to test out a waist level finder before sinking hundreds or even thousands of dollars into a more professional medium format camera, why not pick up one of these for five or six bucks and try that first? And if you already have a Brownie camera, you can participate in International Brownie Camera Days which started February 1st, 2020 and runs through February 29th. You can take pictures with any Brownie camera, not just the Brownie Hawkeye, and submit your favorite image online. There's a link for that online submission in the description down below. It's not a contest, it's just a place to share your favorite image with fellow Brownie enthusiasts. 2020 is shaping up to be the year of the box camera. Eric and Vanya over at the All Through a Lens podcast talked about their love of box cameras recently, and Neil Piper of the Soot and Whitewash podcast has selected two dozen photographers to participate in Project Box Camera, which is a year-long project devoted to, you guessed it, 
box cameras. I've got links to these podcasts and projects in the description too. If you've got any experience shooting box cameras or you plan on participating in International Brownie Camera Days, leave a comment down below. If you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. You can also follow me on Instagram at the old camera guy. Thanks for watching and until next time, do some good, have some fun and shoot some film.